Okay, I'm going to go through the process real quick with you. Um, what I'm doing now is showing you my back room. Uh, what the process would normally start with is a phone call to our office or to an office for an OMP facility uh, such as this. This is our plaster area here. So what you would do is you would make a phone call to our facility and you would say we have a patient that needs a prosthetic limb. Uh, with that the practitioner will contact the patient and make an appointment to see the patient for an evaluation as to what prosthesis is actually uh, the most beneficial for them. We would then send a detailed prescription off to the physician and the physician would then sign that detailed prescription. We would verify their insurance benefits and sorry my shop is such a mess but this is a typical OMP facility shop. So you would, I'm going to walk upstairs and show you a good view of it. <clears throat> so you would uh, then have a practitioner that is in contact with the physician and open up a line of communication so that the patient can then receive the most appropriate prosthesis for them. So what we would do is we'd go out to the patient's home, assuming now at this point we have a detailed prescription in hand, and we would use plaster of Paris, such as this, to fabricate a cast. This is a cast of a patient here. All of the markings inside this, we mark the patellar going down from top to bottom, the patellar tendon, tibia plateau, and tibia crest. This would be all of the markings that we would need. This is the fibula head here. And these would give us all the bony prominences that we would need in order to fabricate a mold. Now I've sent a mold that you should have, and it is actually this mold here. This is an actual mold. So once we have the cast, we pour it full of plaster. And then we modify this mold according to the modifications or the alterations that we want to make to the socket so as to give a comfortable fit to the patient. We'll add a little pressure to the lateral tibial flare. We'll give a little relief over the condyles as well as make an indention for the patellar tendon bearing. From that mold, we then stick it into the oven, heat the mold, and then the mold is then placed, I'm sorry, let me run back over here, grab the mold. The mold is then placed here and we take the plastic, this is one that has already been done, we heat this up to about 400 degrees and then this is placed placed in the oven, it creates a bubble and the bubble is then vacuumed onto the mold and then once the once the plastic cools and cures you can see here where the trim lines are where we've already cut it out once before and we end up with a test socket. A test socket is a clear, it's the clear plastic, but it's a clear socket that we can see through. This is a test socket here. This is the one that I will be sending to you. And then the lock is placed in here. You can see the hole for the button. The lock is placed in here and then we add a foot and a pylon to the bottom of this so that we can see exactly where all the pressures are that the patient might be receiving and we make modifications to this. This is very moldable with heat. 
once we have all the modifications made, we then re-pour this socket and we make a mold, another mold, that we will laminate to. The lamination process, we have uh, several different products that we lay up. This is a carbon braid. And then also we have the Naya glass. And we'll have four layers of, I'm sorry, two layers of the carbon braid and four layers of the Naya glass that, uh, that we'll put on that. We'll then saturate that with a resin that will harden. And then we will cut that again off the mold. This time the mold usually gets destroyed and we will end up with a socket that is just like this which we will be sending as well this is a very lightweight socket so we'll end up with this here and then this is actually a finished product that will go on the patient once the pyramid and the lock has been placed and the foot has been placed on it as well Okay. and then once we have made a final delivery to the patient, we will contact a therapy department or a home health department and inform them of the delivery. And then at that time, you will schedule for a, uh, a second consultation with the patient to make sure that everything is going well uh, with the patient uh, upon delivery and see if there's any additional therapy services or nursing services that they might need in order to uh, facilitate the use of their prosthesis. I uh, hope this helps, and thank you all, and good luck. Bye-bye.